All right, Dogs by Nature, Rufio here. Today we're going to be taking a look at Steve Wilkes' defense, uh, kind of how it's working and some adjustments he's made uh, to the defense over the course of the year. So if Wilkes has kind of a base coverage, I would say this is it. It's, it's cover three. Uh, we're going to see soft coverage on the outside by these corners. This is the Ravens game, so especially with our starting cornerbacks out, you're going to see them playing soft or at least bailing out after the snap. Uh, obviously, cover three refers to the three deep players. So those typically are going to be the outside cornerbacks and a high safety. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of injuries in the secondary this year. And when everyone is healthy, that high safety is typically Demarius Randall. He's the best player on our team at playing that kind of middle of field safety. Okay, so in cover three, we do have those three deep players. We also have four zone coverage players underneath. And typically, there's going to be two linebackers, two at least traditional linebackers. One of those is always Joe Schobert. Uh, the other one would be Christian Kirksey when he's healthy. Other times, that's been Mac Wilson coming into the lineup. Now, outside of those players, typically, we have our kind of strong safety, box safety, uh, and our kind of nickel player or our hybrid player that allows us to play that kind of 4-2-5 style that Wilkes likes to play. Uh, as I roll this forward here, we're going to see this is a pass on behalf of the Ravens. You see how this coverage works. We get soft, deep thirds on the outside, or at least bailing to those deep thirds on the outside. Those cornerbacks' job is to make sure that nothing gets deep in their third of the field. Deep middle of the field safety, largely taking away post routes, other deep routes toward the middle of the field. Uh, the Ravens here come up with a kind of weird set. It's a quads set. So there are four eligible receivers all to the high side of this formation here to the offense's right. Uh, that is a really weird thing to deal with. Typically, when offense is motion to that, you get some kind of backfield action or immediate crossing route, or they'll option or they'll uh, kind of motion out of that before the snap. Uh, this is something I've been really impressed with from Wilkes' defense. He seems to be prepared and have our players prepared for anything they're going to see before the snap. Uh, I, I think it's probably a lot of that is simplifying the scheme and just letting our players play fast, which I love. Um, but, you know, you never see one of these downs that the Browns have where, you know, the other team has motion and everybody's scrambling and we got to burn a timeout or we get caught horribly out of position. You know, every time I think we've been beat, or out schemed, it's been with something after the snap, which is you know exactly what you want to see. You want to be as prepared as you can be to defend the team in front of you. And I really commend Wilkes for the job he's doing with that. Now, with this kind of quad set, it's a little distorted, but you kind of see the way the under, uh, underneath coverage works in this zone. These inside players are typically going to match up pretty uh, tightly to a person and more of kind of a, a, a zone match or a, a pattern match kind of play. Um, they're going to basically take the inside receivers, number three, anything crossing, uh, things breaking inside. And then these two outside guys, uh, I'll call them kind of the apex player for lack of a better term. And it doesn't really matter who that physical person is, if it's Whitehead, if it's Burnett, if it's, you know, maybe we put a, another linebacker on the field to be a little bit bigger. Uh, that person is typically taking number two if they get vertical and then expanding from the seam to the hook outside the hook zone and then into the flat. So kind of working, you know, down the seam, if anyone's kind of threatening the seams on either side of the free safety, uh, they're going to kind of try to reroute that person. Then they're looking if number one runs kind of a, a down the field in the hook pattern, they're looking to get underneath that. And then finally, after those two things are taken care of, if there's a route going into the flat, that person is going to then come up to cover the flat. So here you can see that particularly on the strong side of the field, there is you know, no immediate vertical threat by number two, and then we have this really weird quad set. So the apex player here just passes everybody to the inside, which works out perfectly, right? Pass two to the inside, we've got two inside waiting to cover, and he immediately just jumps to that flat because he knows he can. Um, but this is kind of the way the cover three works, and game plan against the Ravens was to make Lamar Jackson, you know, would die by a thousand paper cuts kind of thing. Um, make him throw these throws that are longer, uh, outside the numbers, and not give him any big vertical plays down the field. So make him throw short and 
um, outside and then just come up and tackle and contain these wide receivers that Baltimore has. Uh, I think we did a really good job of executing that game plan as well. Uh, but that is a weakness of this cover three. A lot of the times to the weak side of the field, uh, that underneath flat is going to be an open area. Uh, as you can see here, that player, you know, they have a lot of ground to cover, uh, especially from that opposite hash. They have to check their run responsibilities first. They have to make sure no one's vertically threatening into the field, and only then can they sort of expand and get out wide uh, in that cover three defense. So that is a weakness of the defense. Uh, every defense has a weakness, and I think we've done a really good job so far of, you know, forcing the offense to do uh, what we want them to do. You know, we, we wanted to take away the Ravens running game in this game. Uh, you got to take away those vertical threats from Lamar Jackson as well, because if he's going to throw accurately, you want him to throw accurately and get five yards and not 50. Um, so I think we've done a really good job of just you know, ensuring that our defense's weaknesses align with what we want the offense to be doing. All right, so here we are uh, against the Jets, and we see again this cover three shell. Uh, corners playing softer on the outside, especially against these kind of reduced splits uh, from the wide receivers as they come in tight to their formation. That's typically when you're going to float off as this uh, cornerback. We also get the single high safety in the middle of the field. It's a cover three look. Again, we have our two linebackers on the field, and we're matching up with those two apex players who in this case are, again, both safeties. You know, that's one of the things I like about this 4-2-5 is we can be kind of symmetrical down the middle of the field. I think that's something that really helps, again, simplify the defense for the players is that if we have one big thumping linebacker in one of these spots and then a coverage safety in another one, uh, if the offense aligns differently or sends different guys in motion and we're worried about those mismatches, you know, it can really cause a lot of confusion and having to sort a lot of things out as a defense. So when we play with these two kind of box safeties on the field, we were just symmetrical, right? We can just shift things down a little bit. We can trade responsibilities. And it's not that big of a deal to have, you know, the guy on the left covering the tight end as opposed to the guy on the right. As we move forward to this end zone angle here, we can see how this works against the run. Here, you can just see how this defense works. It's a, it's a one gap scheme most of the time. And that means everybody just has a gap through which they are going to rush the passer or if it's a running play, uh, they're going to tackle any ball carrier that comes through that gap. Uh, so typically in this defense, we have a strong side and a weak side. And to that strong side of the field, we have a three technique. Sometimes here we've, we've ducked that player into a two technique head up on the guard. Uh, but that player is going to play through this B gap here. Uh, any player that's aligned over the tight ends, well, a lot of times if there's a tight end on the field, we'll have our defensive end aligned right in front of that tight end head up, and they're going to play that inside gap, uh, that C gap right inside of that tight end. So you can see how that would work on either side here. We have a nose tackle who's either at a one technique outside of the center or a, a two eye most of the time, which is the inside shoulder, kind of inside half a man of the guard. That player is going to have the A gap here. Uh, and then our linebackers also have one gap. So with Ogunjobi here going out into the C gap, Schobert gets to run with this A here. And then with uh, Richardson here in the A gap, Kirksey has the B gap outside of him. And then our apex players simply in this formation just have the outside gap, right? Their job is to just set the edge. Uh, turn any run that goes outside back inside and let these linebackers and defensive linemen flow to where that ball is and make the tackle. As we roll this forward here, we can see, you know, pretty predictable run situation. Kirksey gets a great run read. He was maybe on a blitz um, or he just had a great run read. Gets that run right through his gap. He goes untouched. Nobody blocks him and he's able to hit the ball carrier in the backfield. Uh, so this is how that cover three typically works against the run. Now I'm going to show you an adjustment that Steve Wilkes made against his own team uh, in the Los Angeles Rams. All right, so here we have the game against the Los Angeles Rams, a team that's known for their zone running scheme, and specifically the Rams love that outside zone or that kind of mid-zone run where they get to head the running back at the edge of line of scrimmage, try to trap everybody inside, just seal them inside and let Gurley run around the edge uh, and go make big plays. Uh, so that is kind of the threat that the zone running game is based on. Uh, there's obviously cutbacks that can happen in the zone running game as well. 
Uh, those can be just as dangerous for defense if you don't shore them up. Uh, so from this angle, we should see that Wilkes is running the same coverage as he normally does. He's running his same cover three. He's just made a few tweaks to how we run this uh, in order to stop these zone teams. I think this is something we might see against the San Francisco 49ers this upcoming week as well. So the thing that should be obvious is that the Browns look like they're in a much different defensive shape. Instead of having that kind of apex player playing wide, we've shifted a linebacker out wide outside the formation. And this tight split wide receiver here is really a mismatch in the running game against that linebacker. Uh, linebacker should be able to be more physical than that wide receiver and beat that block. Uh, and having these guys outside, either a linebacker or one of our safeties that we really like up in the running game, uh, they should be able to force that run to cut back inside, right? That takes away that threat of that zone run, kind of having everyone loop around, seal those defenders inside, and letting that running back just kind of run around the corner and make these big plays. We've positioned our players up at the line and wide to force that cut back into the middle. Now, as I roll this forward slightly, you can see this might look like a different look with three players deep here uh, and a soft coverage here, but this is going to rotate into that cover three. So we're going to have this player rotate back to become the deep middle of field safety. Those corners are playing off and they're going to be the deep third in their third of the field. And this safety here is going to come up into the box late. And that's something I thought Wilkes did a really good job of against the Rams is kind of hiding these players uh, you know, giving Goff these kinds of reads, if, is it going to be too high? Is it going to be single high? And these safeties would mess around before the snap uh, to really confuse the offense. So in any event, as I roll this forward, we're going to see this is a out, uh, zone run. Could be outside zone, probably mid zone here with the tackle kicking out. Um, but as, it doesn't really matter to our defense what zone run it is. We're going to have all our guys out there setting the edge, making it really hard for that running back to bounce anything to the outside. Meanwhile, to the inside of the play, we do have Schobert as kind of the lone traditional linebacker here. But if we watch our safety coming into the box late, he's going to come up almost where that other linebacker spot would be. And he, along with Schobert, are going to kind of pinch the running back, just leverage him and flow to him uh, and stop any of those cutbacks from happening to the inside. As I roll to the end zone angle, we can see the difference in this strategy versus the normal cover three. Here is Schobert, and we have uh, Eric Murray here wide. Those are typical, normal positions for our defense. However, uh, in our normal cover three, we'd have Mac Wilson playing inside, and we would roll uh, Whitehead here up outside to have that kind of symmetrical look. But Steve Wilkes ran this adjustment. I call this a cover three buzz look. Um, that's the terminology I'm familiar with, where the linebacker is actually playing outside, and the safety will insert inside. Uh, that means the linebacker becomes kind of an apex player in the zone, whereas the safety will become the three receiver hook player, uh, the inside player. So again, as I roll this forward here, we're going to see zone to the defenses right here on the snap. There's nowhere for that running back to go outside. We've cut him off. We're forcing him to cut back to the middle where we have people waiting and help on the way just in case they can't get him. I thought we did a really good job of shoring up our run defense against the Los Angeles Rams in this kind of zone-heavy running scheme. I hope to see the same thing against the San Francisco 49ers on Monday night. Uh, that's it for me this week, Browns fans. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Rufio. Make sure to visit dogsbynature.com for all your Cleveland Browns news and analysis. Uh, go Browns, and we'll see you in the next one.